Hello, Cher. Where were you? I rang twice. Next time, knock three times and ask for Wendy. Who's Wendy? More? Thanks. Father really ought to get a housekeeper again. I'm not so bad. And I don't mind spending my evenings out. You babysit nicely, too. Look, I'm sorry to ask you again on a Saturday, love, but there are some American architects visiting the site and Tony wants to take them out to dinner. He only heard this morning. What time? Seven. Thanks. You won't have to do anything. I'll give her a bottle and put her to bed and, and all the rest of it. Oh, I'm expert. Father's back. What? Shirley! <laughs> to what do we owe this pleasure? Hmm? I came to see if Roy would babysit tonight. Oh. Ever thought of offering him the job of a full-time nanny? <laughs> Offer it to father. He's got away with little girls. I don't know what that's supposed to mean. <laughs> Do you? <sighs> Sometimes I just don't understand them at all. Damn shame they ever abolished national service. Well, I could have put some guts into him. I know he'd hate the army. He couldn't live that sort of life. He needs to be brought out of himself. Wounds about too much. Roy's all right. He never stops reading. Maybe. But he reads such odd things. The other day he was reading something by... What was the name? Simone, Simone... De Beauvoir. That isn't really odd. Roy is pretty intelligent. I know. Hello, Cheryl. Sure. Hello, love. She's had her bottle. She's sound asleep. Hello, Roy. Hello, Tony. Like a drink? No, thanks. Well, help yourself if you change your mind later. You could make some coffee if you'd rather. Foresight Tigers on television. Again. Yeah, well, you could play some records. We'll wake her. Well, oh, come on, for God's sake. Oh, all right. How about that? Just a minute. Hmm? Oh. Thanks. Bye-bye. Good night, Roy. Have a good time.
Hello, Roy. Hello. Look, there's nothing wrong with the flat. We liked it. It's just... It's the price. Won't they come down at all? Afraid not. I really tried. Have you got anything else you can show us? Well, there is a place on Walnut Way. Not quite so good a district, but the flat itself has... Hello? It's the Major for you, Roy. Yes? I must see you right away. I can't now. I'm busy. When can you come, then? In about an hour. All right, then. Goodbye. Would you like me to show it to you? Okay. Oh, Roy, what did it wear be? Come on, boy, lemon and lime at the front. It's a hot day. Chocolate goes better in the winter. Got it? Sorry, sir. It's a lot of bother, Roy. She's being bloody difficult about this dinner party at the Parkhurst tonight. Carol? I wouldn't take Carol. Are you mad? Lorna. Oh, old faithful. Stupid bitch. If it wasn't for me, she wouldn't even be invited by people like the Parkhurst. Problems? Hmm. Trouble is, someone's dropped it. She's not the only one. Who? Who what? Dropped it. I don't know. Take your choice. Anyway, she gave me hell on the phone this afternoon, so uh, here's the drill. We all three go, then we leave early. I explain you haven't been feeling too well. Then I drop you home. I make it up to Lorna by giving you a night out on the town. Oh, good afternoon, Major. Oh, good afternoon, madam. I'll do a club or something like that. All right. Will you play along? Okay. You're a good sport, really, right? Look at that. <laughs> yeah. Uh, boy, come here. Have you tried Harris? Thank you. He wants a tourist boycott of Portugal and South Africa. Well, I prefer live and let live myself. Yes, but this woman has been working for her for years. And then just because she finds she can earn six times as much at a factory, she's off. They don't care about loyalty now. Major. Yeah. You're the expert. Am I? On what, I wonder. <laughs> it's lovely having the Major here. He's such an expert on wine. Sheer velvet. There's nothing like a first-rate border. You can get it through the wine society. Do you? You certainly know the ropes. I've never been able to tell a burgundy from a claret myself. Oh, he's a man of parts. Well, you know, talking about clothes, though. What did you see? What's her name? Arriving at the... Oh, yeah, yes, she was wearing Max's flexible spring top. You know, I've never seen Roy so damned animated in my life. Must be his little table companion. He's doing very well for someone who's not been feeling up to the mark. He's always been delicate, you know. Gets tired very quickly. Fits him like that, doesn't it, Lorna? Yes, dear. Mm. And she was wearing these mid-calf knickers tucked into snakeskin boots. <laughs> what color knickers? Forest green. You yes. I wonder why we do this sort of thing. Are we doing anything? Separating the men from the girls after dinner. So we can tear them to pieces. I'd rather go on talking to Roy about fashion. He's sweet. Really. Not that I'm against any kind of change, but there's change for a reason. And there's change just for the sake of change. Take some of our young extremists. They just want to tear everything down. I have to agree. Shall we join the ladies? Mm. Can't wait. Oh, Roy. Uh, how are you feeling? A bit tired, eh? I'll make excuses. Well, is there anything left of us? A few fragments on the floor over there. We'll be back in the early hours. Oh, Roy, if you like those clothes, I want to know what you I'm afraid Roy isn't feeling too well. I'm afraid we'll have to run him home. What 
You can still make up a fortune, Thanks. and the young people can dance. But I wanted him for my partner. He's such an expert. Well, dear lady. Bye bye. Bye bye. Thank you. Bye bye. Bye bye, Mayor Dyer. Good night. Come on, Roy. Oh, great thing about that dance. No. No, not that one. That's awful. I can't imagine why you're in such a hurry to get back. Can't you? I could have gone on dancing all night. Mm. Yet, mind my hair. Don't care about your hair. <laughs> well, what then? What do you think? <laughs> Don't. Hmm? Oh. Anyway, you're getting to be known as something of a Don Juan in this neighborhood. For Christ's sake, we've been through all that this afternoon on the phone. Oh. Well, I'm not sure I'm in the mood anyway. Better be. Roy will be asleep by now. I'm still not sure I'm in the mood. Like to be persuaded, don't you? Get off! Shh, quiet. You wake Roy. Where are we going this time? Roy won't hear us down here. I'd like it on the sofa. You like it anywhere, dear. Come on. girl to bed. Go on, get her. heard about people like you. God knows I never thought my own son. You mad? You mad? Where'd you get that awful thing that you're wearing? Hmm? Pick it up. Pick up your little girl shoe. Go on. Look at me. Go on, look at me. Hold your head up like a man, even if you aren't one. What are you, for Christ's sake? Have you no pride? Go on, get up. Get up, you little you make me sick. Get up, get up. You humiliate me, would you, you little monster? If you don't stop, you'll kill me. Better tell me about it, hadn't you? Go on, tell me about it. How long has this been going on? All my life. What's that supposed to mean? All my life. You've got to learn to be a man. It's no good. What do you mean it's no good? Being a man. I've tried. There are doctors who can cure this sort of thing. 
I'll have you cured, no matter what the cost. No. It's useless. Don't tell me that! Don't you want to be a man? Why not? Are you a homosexual? Are you one of these people that go to pubs and places and get picked up by men? No, I'm not. I don't understand. I just don't understand. A great thing to be a man. Why can't you be a man? Because I don't feel like what one. What do you feel like then? A woman? Yes. Stupid bitches. You're mad. Come down here. Come on. <laughs> Some woman. You must be mad. Come here. Now, just look at yourself. Some woman. Thank God your mother never lived to see this. Thank God she got away from you. What did you say? You drove her to death. Germans used to send people like you to the gas chamber. And decorate people like you. By God, I'm going to teach you. You can kill me, but you won't teach me. God made man in his own image. And he blew it. Why did it have to be mother? I don't understand it. First, he dresses up like a woman, then he disappears without a word. I think he's gone mad. He was upset. He was upset. Well, we both were. I'm sure there's nothing really wrong with Roy, Dad. Don't tell me that. You didn't see him that night. It was nightmarish. His life hasn't exactly been a bed of roses with you, has it? Mm -hmm. Oh, he's, uh, he's probably gone off somewhere to think things out. Mm -hmm. There's something terrible that's happened. We're bound to have heard by now. Mm. He'll get in touch soon. I don't understand you either. Your brother goes mad and you just sit there quite calmly. We don't know he's gone mad. What more do you expect? Do you want him to march down the high street in a crinoline or something? Uh, you're just trying to defend him. I agree with you. He shouldn't have done what he did, but... Well, it's not the end of the world. What, in your opinion, then, is the end of the world? Well, kidnapping a child. Hitting an old lady over the head and stealing her savings, I don't know. Killing someone. Hmm. I knew I should have sent him to a boarding school. He told me I drove your mother to death. Well, he was upset. Put yourself in his place. What? You shouldn't have hit him, Dad. I didn't really hurt him. Just a few slaps. I don't understand it. Can't think where he's gone. Worries me. Well, if it'll make you feel better, call the police and tell them he's missing. Well, I'll let all my friends know that my own son ran away from me.
she would grow. this morning. Uh, would you pass it through the door, please? Thank you. where you and I part company. Hello, Wendy.
Now remember, your name is Wendy Ross. You come from Cornwall. And your mother died recently. Right, miss. Miss, are you all right? Yes. The train on platform five is seventeen twenty five. Yes, dear. Gee, please. Won't be a minute. Cheese, any ham? I won't bother then. Got a cold? Oh, it's nasty when you lose your voice. Here, try one of these, dear. Have you got Dalton's weekly, please? Uh, yes. Thank you. The passengers now on platform two, please go to platform four where the 1732 has just arrived.
Hello, darling. You going anywhere? What's the matter? Hmm? What's up? The train now standing on platform three will stop at... Arriving or departing? I just arrived. What? I arrived. What are you doing tonight? Driving me truck. My views on the pill? No. Oh, will you come back to the room? Yes. It's at the top. Do you mind stairs? No. Better come in and see it then. I should leave your things there. You might hate it. You share the bathroom with a girl next door. She's an art student. There's a loo adjoining. The room's small, but, but not pokey. You get a view, too. Even the loo has a view. Last girl moved out a week ago. She gave me time to do a bit of low dusting. The kitchen's through here. Well, just what I want. You could do worse with six pounds ten a week. I'll take it. Good. My name is Wendy Ross. Come in, Miss Ross. Have a drink. While we discuss all the boring details. Hello. Oh, Frank Birchall, Wendy Ross. She's taking the room upstairs. How'd you do? How'd you do? Frank, be a dear. Get Miss Ross a drink. Yes, of course. Wouldn't you like to take your coat off? Oh, yes. Thanks. Drink. Do sit down, Miss Ross. Is there a sherry all right? Oh, yes, thank you. I'll, um, I'll need a reference, of course, to a doctor, a bank manager, someone like that. Oh, I didn't think of that. You see, I've come rather a long way. I've come from Cornwall. I'd have to write. Suppose I give you a month's rent in advance. Yes, that should set Margaret's mind at rest. Don't make me sound like a harpy. The very best sort of harpy. Yes, Margaret's a very intelligent woman, Miss Ross. Which is why we all love her. Men usually hate intelligent women, haven't you noticed? There we are. Well, uh, I must be off, I'm afraid. Where? In a weak moment, I promised Hinchley I'd coach the second eleven before their game. Yes, goodbye. I hope to see you again, Miss Ross. Here's your rent. Thank you. You look tired. Yes, I am a little. Where did you say you came from? Uh, Cornwall. My mother died recently, after a long illness. The doctor suggested that I should have a complete change. I'm sorry. How awful.
Is Mr. Birchall a, a football coach? He's a sports master, services the local schools. I'm a teacher too, English, so is Philip, history. Oh, who's Philip? My husband. Oh, I, I thought that Mr. Birchall was... With my husband? <laughs> no such luck. Well, I was joking, of course. What do you do? Oh, oh and nothing at the moment. I, uh, my mother left me some money. Well, enough to live on. Lucky you. Philip's grandmother left him this house. We couldn't afford to live in it without letting rooms. Teachers aren't the highest paid members of society. Drink all right? That's fine. Oh. oh, Philip. This is my husband, Philip, Wendy Ross. She's moving in upstairs. Hello. Miss Ross left her things in the hall. Be a pet and take them up, will you? Well, can I have a drink? Yes, when you come back. You've made it. Come in. Hello, I'm June. Yes. Would you like to come and have some coffee with me? No. Yes. I've been dying to talk to you for ages, actually, because you always look so super. Oh. Well, thank you. Uh, I'll just finish the sleeves first. Oh. Okay. Changed. I just felt like it. Sugar? You take the chair. I'll sit on the bed. Is this yours? Yes. I like it. Thank you. I've been meaning to ask you for ages about the records. Are they driving you mad? Oh, I enjoy music. I could just play them when you're out. No, it's all right. You see, I don't often go out in the evenings anyway. No, I'd noticed that. Why? Are you getting over an unhappy love affair? Oh, no. My mother died recently. Sorry. Well, Margaret told me that, actually. But I didn't believe her. I was convinced you were licking romantic wounds. 
Do I look like a woman with a past? Definitely. Or a spy, perhaps. Really? It's that sexy voice. Woman of mystery. Mm. Are you doing anything tonight? Um, well, I... I'm going to the pictures with some friends. They're two smashing boys. You'd like them. Thank you very much for asking me. But I can't this evening. Well, another time. Tomorrow. Please ask me again. More coffee? No, thanks. Hello, Wendy. Hello, Frank. Come in. I hope I'm not disturbing you. Pretty. I say. Um, Philip and I were wondering whether you'd like to come and have Sunday lunch with us. Thank you. June's coming too, and Frank. I'm sure he's very... Yes, he is. You look so scared for a moment. I suppose I've been alone too much since... since... Yes, I think you have. Which explains our little plot. To bring you out of your shell. To Beauvoir. <laughs> Poor thing. Sunday, then. Sunday. Good. I must be mad inviting you all to lunch. I've just peeled 37 potatoes. Can I help? No, help us make more work. Philip, get up your ass and do some work. Come on. You know, you enjoyed the drama of the heat and steam. Our Sunday lunches are a sort of fascist ritual. But it smells super in there. No. A gastronomic Nuremberg rally. They say the first ten years are the hardest. Philip, don't try and impress Wendy with words. Perhaps she'd like another sherry while I'm playing what you'd call my housefrau act in the kitchen. How about you? Hello, Frank. Yeah. Good to see you, Frank. Have a drink. Oh, thanks. Um, can I have a beer? Frank thinks sherry's a woman's drink. Margaret thinks I'm unrefined. Always telling people what a social bore I am. Oh, Margaret, he's never a bore. No, you idiot, a bore. It's a kind of brutish animal. <laughs> Here. Thank you. I think I'd have described you as a bore. Hello. And where have you been hiding? You're looking very pretty. Very cool, too. It's all a front. True? Sometimes. You're not what you seem, either. 
No. Well, you look very strong, but... Go on. You're really quite sensitive, I think. <laughs> Woman's intuition. If you like. Hmm. I do. You're quite right. You know, you understand me so well, I think you ought to marry me. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to frighten you. Oh, it's just I never thought about getting married. Oh, why not? I mean, you're hardly the career girl type, are you? What type am I? Woman of mystery. Nonsense. The only thing that sets Wendy apart from the rest of us is she has a private income. You mean you're rich as well? <laughs> this isn't my day. An heiress and she's just refused to marry me. I'm not rich. I've, I just have a small income. You asked Wendy to... She turned me down flat. <laughs> Contents under pressure. Keep tightly closed in a cool, dark place. Certainly not what Frank thinks you are. You're not even a woman of mystery. That's not my idea of a woman. He understands how I feel. Like a kind of twisted mechanism. Why? <laughs> Runners in sunlight. Look so hot. They must be potty. They do it in all weathers. Margaret. Oh, they have to, to feel superior. And always feel superior when they're doing something unpleasant. To prove their existence? Yes, that's true. <laughs> of course it's true. But don't you like being a woman? I mean, there are so many unpleasant things we don't have to do. We have to suffer them instead, which makes us in their eyes. Inferior. The woman is just pretty and a lit witch. She's quite happy to feel inferior, but God help us if we wear knickers and have minds of our own. Then we're independent. Unfeminine. Well, I like knickers. <laughs> <laughs> and I wouldn't mind depending on a man in the 20th century. Yes. You are a strange girl. Come in. Oh, please sit down. What can we do for you? I need a job. That's why we're here. And you're here. What kind of a job? As a beautician. Do you have any experience? No, but I know I could learn quickly, because I'm very interested. Yes, I would think so. What kind of work have you done before? Uh, in an office. Do you have an employment card? No. I left it behind where I used to work, at Cornwall. We need it, you know. And your birth certificate. Birth certificate? And references. What was the name of your last employer? Some firms insist on a medical, you know. Are you healthy?
Can I come in? You must be ill. Have you been dressed up like that since you left home? Oh, well, now I have other dresses. You like this one? You never get away with that wig, you know. It's my own hair. Your makeup's dreadful. Oh, is it? Well, what's wrong with it? Too much eyeshadow for one thing. Oh, this is ridiculous. We can't drink tea like this and you sit there dressed like that and talk. Roy! My name is Wendy now. Wendy Ross. Cheryl, what else is wrong? I refuse to discuss it. Now listen, Roy. Don't call me Roy. Well, I'm certainly not going to call you Wendy. Well, then I shall call you Sam. Couldn't you be cured? I am cured. Please go and put your own clothes on and wash your face. But these are my own clothes. You look awful. That's not true. What are you living on? Well, I managed to save a bit. And there was that money that Mother left me. Aren't you afraid to go out? I was at first. But it's better now. These people where you're living, don't they suspect? No. <sighs> well, someone's bound to sooner or later. Listen, Roy. Yes, Sam? You ought to be ashamed. I was ashamed before. You've got to see a doctor. Yes. Yes, I'm going to. Well, men's clothes are almost like women's clothes these days. I still don't want to wear them. Why not? Because they're men's clothes. If women's clothes were made out of old sacking, I'd want to wear them. That's a pretty colour. Cool flame. It's better than mine. What are you doing? Just trying it on one nail. I wonder if things would have been different if Mother had lived. After all, you were very young. Well, after she died, you didn't want to become a boy. Don't be silly. Well, what I really meant was... It's... Nothing to do with Mother. It's to do with me. It's a question of glands. Well, I didn't know anything about glands. Well, nor do I, really. But I think that's what it is. Cool flame. I'm going to get some. If I were you, I wouldn't try to look too attractive. Why not? Well, you want men to stay away, don't you? Not come closer. Hadn't you ever thought of that? Bravo! <laughs> Any luck about a job yet? Not much. You see, I haven't found anything I like yet. Oh, something will turn up. Frank, do come in. It must be freezing out there. He's being so boring. He's enjoying himself. He's like a great oh. wet spaniel. Oh, God. No, no, keep away, Frank. You're freezing. <laughs> oh, me. Oh, what was it like? Would you believe bracing? It's unpleasant. It's bound to be good for you. <laughs> hey, June, you coming in? You're joking. What about you? I am drinking. Oh. Wendy? Oh. No, I don't want to. Oh, come on. It's I don't want to. That's when you like it. Frank, stop it. Sue, you love it. Come on. I don't want to. Stop it, Frank. What's the matter? I don't want to. Don't you understand? Hey. <laughs> Frank, stop it. <laughs> stop it, Frank. I don't like games. I just don't understand that, girl. You better face it, Frank. She's impervious to your charms. What the hell do you think you're doing?
going out with a man. You've got to stop this. You've got to get over it. You think you're very clever, don't you? Fooling everybody. You think you're very pretty. But you're made out of foam rubber and sticking plaster. And you're a bitch. An insane bitch of an animal. You can feel it. Some woman. Some stupid bitch. Could you lend me some money? How much? Well, about 500 pounds. Sorry, love, I just haven't got it. Why don't you ask father? I'd rather rob a bank. Come to think of it, some of the best bank robberies have been done by men dressed as women. <coughs> love, I'm sorry to have turned you out just now, but I've got a lot to do before... Before Tony comes? I know. I'm glad you're going to see a doctor anyway. Yes. Don't you get lonely all by yourself? Well, I've got lots of friends. What about the baby? What do you mean? Well, don't ever tell her about me, will you? Let her believe what she sees. Oh, Roy, really? Well, the baby will be the one person who believes. I'm not sure that she'll ever know you. Well, for heaven's sake, Roy, just think how it might affect her. But, Shirley, it's... It's not my mind that's wrong, it's my body. I'm not doing anything wrong. I'm not seducing young girls or trying to pick up boys. I'm not harming anyone. I just want to be what I am. Please, Shirl. Come in, Miss Ross. Please sit down. I gather you didn't want to discuss your problem with Dr. Murdoch. Well, you tell me about it now. I'm not Miss Ross. No? I'm sorry. It's, it's difficult. Would you like me to make it easier? Your problem is that you're not a woman. I hate to leap to conclusions, but I'm forced to assume you're really a man. Yes. I is it so? Mm -hmm. Not a bit. Only an old hand could spot it. When you first came in, I was completely fooled. How did you know? Well, you did give me a pretty good clue. You said you weren't Miss Ross. Are you completely a man? Well, I think I am. In my body. But I feel like a woman. So you dress like one? Yes. Always? For six months I've lived like this. And no one's found out? Congratulations. Uh, would you mind getting undressed? Oh, do I have to? Please. I'll wait here. Just tell me when you're ready. I'm ready. Come out into the light, will you? Drop your arms to your sides. I have to see your breasts. They're developing. I've noticed it. Let's see the rest of them. We've got those bandages off. Use these, room. My breasts are definitely... Yes, I'm afraid that's self-deception. Is it? It's perfectly normal. Hard as that way may sound under the circumstances. Do people like me often think that... Yes, exactly. Mm -hmm. Yes. There's a gown over there. Just put it on, will you?
Who will get them down, please? Oh, I hate this. Please, anything I ask you to do is because I want to help you. Do you shave? No, hardly at all. Any sexual interest in women? No. In men? Oh, please. No. No? In one man. Is this why you came to see me? Only part of it. Come and sit down. number of feminine features, anatomically speaking. That in itself is not so unusual. Many men. Cigarette. No, thanks. You don't look very comfortable. Would you like to put on your clothes again? Go on. My mother left me some money. Could you afford to have an operation? I assume that's what you came to see me about. How much would it cost? About a thousand pounds. A thousand? However, don't let's go into details about that yet. If it's possible, we can usually work something out. Is it possible for me? Physically, I don't see any major problems. If you look like me, I'd advise against it, but... we have to explore the psychological effects. I'd be happy. I'm sure you think you would. But why? I'd be a woman. A female form divine? No, I'm afraid not. Please sit down. You'd be a pretty good imitation of a woman. But I... I know, I know. Please listen to me a moment longer. In legal terms, a cigarette? No, I'm, I'm sorry, I forgot. In legal terms, your sex would still be male. I doubt that real women, born women, would ever consider you as truly one of them. That's very... I'm afraid, my dear Miss Ross, I'm leaving what the Americans call the clincher to the last. As the problem of getting a normal man to accept you as a normal woman. What do you have to know? I can only tell you in cases where they've tried to conceal what they are. It's, um... So think about all this very carefully. Yes. It is, you see, a point of no return. However, if you really feel... Yes? I can put you in touch with a clinic that deals in this kind of thing. And if, after about a year... A year? Oh, yes. Rome wasn't built in a day. If they finally decide you'll be able to cope with all the emotional problems involved, then, as they say, you'll be in business. your sex would still be male. I doubt that real women, born women, would ever consider you as truly one of them. There's the problem of getting a normal man to accept you as a normal woman. It is 
A point of no return. No, 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 no. Is the point of no return the only point? No. There's another one. You could wake up one day and find you'd become a middle-aged man. Then you'd go mad. They take your body away to one of those places. But your mind would stay here. In the end, will I be buried as a woman or a man? Didn't you tell me? First you avoid me for days, now Margaret tells me you're leaving. You're running away from me? My sister's been taken very ill. I have to take care of her. How long will you be gone? I don't know. The doctor says her recovery may take quite a time. Perhaps a year. That's better. Drawbridge firmly up tight again. Are you going off without saying goodbye? Of course not. Will you miss me? Yes. Virgin. Yes. Virgin in the dressing gown. Virgin with the eyes that say come in and the voice that says keep out. What's going to happen to you? I mean, but how will you end up? With a cat in a hot water bottle. Please try to forgive me. Forgive you? Well, that's easy. That's as easy as shit. I forgive you if that's what you want. But they say the eyes are the windows of the soul. Unfortunately, I believe your eyes. Please go. I'll shout. Go ahead. Margaret just went out. There's nobody here but us. You must go, Frank. I do love you, but you must go. as much as I can.
are you feeling? A bit groggy, are we? I'm still alive. Oh, very much so. Oh, I was confused for a moment. Yes, of course. It was about a year ago. I woke up in a bed like this. And... It doesn't matter. Yes. Well, you rest now. Relax. The operation was a complete success. I'll... Look in again a bit later, Miss Ross. Just ring the bell if you need anything. I must always remember how lucky I am to be a girl. <laughs> 